A few lessons ago, we talked about rigid motions, and rigid motions preserve length. They keep size the same. Obviously, as we just looked at in the last lesson, dilations do not keep the same size, so therefore they're not rigid motions. So we have these things called similarity transformations. And similarity transformations are sequences that involve a dilation. So then we have this thing called being similar. And that's when one figure can be obtained from the other by some sort of similarity transformation. So there's some sort of dilation involved. Similar figures have the same shape, but they have different sizes. So we can see that the two triangles here are similar because one of them is a little bit larger than the other. So there was some sort of enlargement that happened. Now we still have our corresponding angles. Those are the angles that are in the same spot. And we still have our corresponding sides, which are the sides that are in the same spot, but they're not congruent. They're similar. Now something tricky that happens is that the angles stay the same measure. Let's write that down, that's important. But what happens is that the side lengths are not. The side lengths are actually what we call proportional. And you learned about proportions for the last few years. Proportions are two ratios that are equal. And we'll look more into that as we get through our examples. Let's look at example one. We have to determine whether the two triangles are similar. So what we're going to do is just look at our coordinates. So the coordinates of A are 0, 3, B is uh, 3, 3, and C is 3, 0. Now let's look at our prime, or um, not our primes, our JKL. So J is 0, 6. K is 6, 6, and L is at 6, 0. So you can look at the coordinates, and you can clearly see that they were all multiplied by 2. Every single number was multiplied by 2. So, spoiler, that's the scale factor, but that's not what they want. They just want to know if it's similar, so the answer is yes, they're similar. All right, let's look at another example. In example two, they tell us that the two figures are similar, and they want us to describe a similarity transformation between the figures. So like I mentioned in an earlier question, there is potentially more than one answer. What I see happened is that this figure got flipped down. So if I draw it across the x-axis, so here's my x-axis, if I draw what it would look like if I flipped it, it would look like um, this. So that kind of looks like what they have, only smaller. So what we do is we look at the coordinates and we figure out how we can dilate it. So definitely it was reflected across the x-axis. Um, then let's look at the point um, 2, negative 1. And on the red figure, that is 4, negative 2. Oh, that's just a dilation by 2. Multiply the coordinates by 2. So then we dilate with a scale factor of 2. Now you could do that in reverse. You could say you would dilate the scale factor, or the red figure, by 1 half and then reflect over the x-axis. That's fine. It doesn't say which one you had to start with. I probably should say which one I did. So reflect blue figure. And then you would dilate the scale factor of 2. All right, let's check out one more. 
An artist draws a replica of a painting that is on the Berlin Wall. The painting includes a red trapezoid. The shorter base of the similar trapezoid in the replica is 3.75 inches. What is the height of the trapezoid? So even though it's going across in this picture, we still call it the height. Um, in a trapezoid, you have two parallel sides. So the height is what connects those two parallel sides. So anyway, um, we have our some measurements. We know that this length is 15 and its corresponding partner is 3.75. And then they tell us that this side is 12 and its corresponding partner is H. In the very beginning of the lesson, I told you that when you have similar figures, you have proportional side lengths. So we can create a proportion with what we know. What we have is 15 inches matches 3.75. Uh, so there's one part of the proportion. Remember, a proportion is two equal ratios. That's something that you learned back when you started doing proportions. I know you've been doing proportions for the last several years. And then that's going to be equal to the other ratio, which is 12 over H. Now, when you learned how to solve proportions, maybe in 7th grade, maybe even in 6th, but I know you do it in 7th, uh, you would do cross multiplication. So you do 15 times H, and that equals 3.75 times 12. So we got to get our calculators powered up. 3.75 times 12 is 45, so we get 15H equals 45. Divide both sides by 15, and you get h is 3. So that tells us that that dimension is 3 inches. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.